ninth in uh, the series of NIU's lecture uh, series called Urban Dialogues. Um, I was trying to reassure our lead speaker that uh, this is the sparsest uh, audience we've had to now, and it, uh, it is uh, not a reflection on the importance of the issue itself uh, or um, on, on the speakers, but perhaps some other factors are at play over here. <coughs> Um, the, the issue of children and young and, and the youth in cities is only now beginning to gather some national attention. Um, fortunately, we've had um, some acknowledgement of the importance of this particular, I, I wouldn't call it a section or a category of citizens, but uh, a very important part of our uh, social life and of, of uh, society uh, overall. Um, in the urban missions that have been trained by the uh, government of India, uh, especially the Smart Cities mission that does uh, uh, make a commitment to building uh, smart, child-friendly cities. And uh, this is an agenda that can I give has a Thank you very much for that, uh, that generous introduction. Uh, it's a real honor to be here. And it's wonderful to have the opportunity for some interdisciplinary and also international dialogue. Over the course of our presentation this evening, we're going to consider how or whether children and young people can be thought of as key stakeholders in all kinds of urban planning, urban design, and urban affairs contexts, particularly as, as we were just discussing in the context of the Smart Cities Agenda in India. So again, just to give a little more background to our sort of academic and research interests. So, as already mentioned, I'm Associate Professor of Human Geography at the University of Northampton, right in the, in the centre of the UK. And my background is that I've worked on a number of really large-scale research projects exploring children and young people's experiences, their participation, and their very detailed, intimate, everyday knowledges of newly built urban spaces in England. My colleague, Dr. Sohad Birdo, is also a geographer, um, and she currently a principal investigator on the new urbanisms in India project and she and her team are currently gathering a real wealth of information and new data about young people's experiences and their participation and their knowledge is in newly built Indian uh, cities. So I'm going to begin the presentation tonight by mapping out some kind of a, a kind of broad conceptual terrain really, mapping out some key ideas relating to children and young people's participation, particularly in kind of urban and newly built um, contexts. I'll make particular reference to two past projects that I've been involved with, with children and young people in newly built urban spaces and built environments in England. Then I'll hand over to, so to Sophie to talk in more detail about the work that she's doing at the moment with her team to engage with children and young people in the context of rapid urbanisation in India, which I'm sure will be of immediate and, and, and currently interested to many of you. So we'll do that by moving through five sections over the course of, of the presentation. I'll begin by introducing some of the academic, uh, some of the, the academic and research context in which Sophie and I both work. And I'll use the term children's geographies to denote quite a large, exciting, developing, interdisciplinary body of research, theory and practice in which ideas of children and young people's participation has become increasingly important over the last couple of decades. I'll then pose some questions which I'd like us ultimately over the course of the evening to begin to reflect on together. And I'll share some arguments which have been proposed by key thinkers in that um, academic context of children's geographies. And I'll present these really as prompts for us to reflect on, particularly on the, the very rich expertise that I'd argue children and young people have about urban places and also children and young people's considerable capacity to act as experts and stakeholders in all kinds of planning, design and decision making processes in urban spaces. As I said, I'll, 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 I'll annotate that with some, some kind of discussion of um, case studies from my research with young people in newly built spaces in the UK and I'll hand over to Solby to talk through some data from her new Business India project. So, so as I 
already mentioned, Sophie and I are both human geographers, and specifically we both really sort of identify ourselves as part of a, a network of so-called children's geographers. Now, as, per, which is a subdisciplinary sort of category which denotes those geographers who are particularly interested in the, uh, children, the, the experiences, issues and needs of children and young people in diverse kinds of spaces, often particularly from built environments and urban spaces. And let me just highlight a couple of ways in which you might want to uh, learn more and connect with this, this international community of, of ongoing research about children and people. So first of all, as already mentioned, I'm one, I'm one of the editors of Children's Geography's Journal, which is a peer-reviewed academic um, publication now in its 40th year, which publishes a wide range of um, research from really kind of eclectic international backgrounds about children and young people in diverse urban spaces, which people will be of, of, of immediate relevance to, to many of you. I hope um, I put the link uh, there on the, on the slide, and I, and I will circulate more information to the speaker by the way, the chair, if, if, to, sorry, to the audience by the chair. Second, um, Sophie and I are both involved in an international um, network of researchers.